Today I'll be showing you guys how to make your own 12 to 1 FMU disc. Once you've got the uh, top off of your FMU, um, you'll be able to see the components, which are the, uh, the top, and then you have your FMU, it's got its diaphragm, and then inside there you have a ring and a disc. This is a 6 to 1. Um, and so this is basically when the uh, when pressure comes through the vacuum line, it pushes down on this diaphragm. This diaphragm will, you know, push down into this thing, and it'll push on this little plate, and the, uh, the the plate will push down on this little button, which seals off this. So um, I've talked to Vortec and a bunch of people who use FMUs, and um, the what makes the difference between the discs is the size, and uh, that makes sense, you know, from a physics standpoint of a smaller disc, you know, it's PSI, pounds per square inch, so if you have more square inches, it's more pounds of pressure. Pushing down on the little button, more pounds closing off the thing. Alright, so I'm about to look really foolish, but um, I'm going to demonstrate how an FMU works. So this is blowing air through the fuel line. This is the path that the fuel will take when you're not under boost. Just flows straight through, and uh, this is after your aftermarket or um, OEM fuel pressure regulator, so that's fine. That just flows back to the tank. Now, this reference line, when this hits um, boost, it's going to push on the diaphragm and close off the valve. So to do that, I'm going to blow through this line, and then I'm going to put this in my mouth as well, and when pressure goes into this, it's going to close it off. So that's what happens when uh, when you hit boost and the FMU will close off that valve and the fuel will stop flowing through as much. I went to a uh, hardware store, Ace Hardware to be specific, and the problem I had was finding a washer that was as big as this opening is. And it's a pretty big opening. Finding a washer that size was a problem and also finding one that was thin enough because this is about half the thickness of a normal washer. It's very thin. Um, and the thickness is extremely important because that determines, you know, when the button gets pushed and stuff like that. So what I did end up finding was this ceiling fan box. Um, it was like $4, $5, and it has this lid that is, I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's extremely thin, that, that lid. It, it's actually, I measured them and it's pretty, pretty close to that thickness. Let's see if I can get it side by side. Yeah, it's pretty close to that. Um, so I bought this. It is a ceiling fan box made by um, what is this made by by Hubble Hubble ceiling fan box part number uh, two nine six um, and uh, yeah, so that's what I'm gonna be using for the lid. As you can see, these are pretty much the exact same thickness. So this disc is a. Uh, too big for this thing, but I'm going to be uh, tracing a template onto it. And um, so I, I found something that works perfectly. It's the bottom of this wine glass. And it fits just perfectly in here. So since the 12 to 1 FMU disc has no ring, it's safe to say this is pretty much the exact same size as that. So I'm just going to put that on there and I'm going to trace it. So there's the template um, for the uh, 12 to 1 FMU disc, traced in pencil. I'm going to go over it with a uh, Sharpie. There's your basic FMU disc. It's a little bent up from the uh, clamp, but I'm just going to hammer that flat and then work on uh, rounding out those edges with the uh, grinding wheel. So there you have it. Um, that is a uh, 12 to 1 size FMU disc. Let's go check the fitment inside the actual FMU. It's yeah. still just a little too big to go in there, so um, I'm going to go take off some more and at the same time try and make it a little bit more round. So that's, that's even more round, and uh, let's go check fitment again. 
closer, but we still need to remove some material. It's just barely too big now, I'm gonna grind off a little bit more. Okay, so here's my new 12 to 1 FMU disc. Sits right in there like a real Vortec 1 would. And it's round. Now that that fits, we have to drill the center hole. Um, I've found the center by putting this in the FMU and drawing lines in between the, uh, the six uh, Allen hole bolts, and now I'm going to take this into the garage, match the size of that center hole, and uh, drill it out. With that hole drilled, we effectively have our uh, 6 to 1 and our 12 to 1 FMU discs now instead of uh, just the 6 to 1. The purpose of the ring um, that was with the 6 to 1 FMU disc is basically it, it centers on those four bolts um, inside here. And so when you're running the 6 to 1 or a 7 to 1 or basically anything but a 12 to 1 or a 10 to 1, this ring centers on those and this basically, it keeps this from moving so that it stays on that center button. If you didn't have that ring, when you push this, you know, it'd be in the FMU just, you know, sliding around like that. Um, that's the reason I decided to go with the 12 to 1 because it has no ring. Uh, the outside of the FMU is the ring. Um, I'll show another video probably later of making a 10 to 1. I've got to find something that I can use to make a ring that's uh, however much the thickness is that I'll find out. And then, but basically the rings just keep the disc in place. So with a 12 to 1, there is no ring um, as long as it's a snug, pretty snug inside the um, housing. Um, but basically that's uh, your 12 to 1 FMU disc in, and it should work exactly the same as a Vortec 12 to 1. The only difference between a 12 to 1 and a 6 to 1 FMU is the diameter of the disc. Um, this cannot be the wrong, I couldn't have made it the wrong size because a 12 to 1 fills up the thing almost 100%. Um, even if mine isn't 100%, you know, perfect, like there's maybe a tiny bit more wiggle room than an OEM one or a tiny bit less wiggle room, like it'll be a 12.0001 to 1 FMU or a 11.999998 to 1 FMU, which is okay because it's a ballpark estimate anyway. Put the FMU back together and it's ready to go into the car as a 12 to 1 instead of the uh, 6 to 1 it came out as. Um, I've smoothed down all the edges uh, with my grinding wheel and the sanding, but you want to put uh, the less rigid and the less uh, raggedy side up because on top of this goes your diaphragm and you don't want uh, anything to tear that. Alright, well this has been how to make a 12 to 1 FMU disc. So with the uh, 12 to 1 disc in, I'm just going to prove that it still works. Here's the end. I'm not going to show you guys the whole thing, but here's uh, just blowing through. And then here's the two together. Diaphragm, valve, everything still works exactly the same. Only uh, now it'll work at, with a 12 to 1, as a 12 to 1 instead of a 6 to 1.